basic uh, pillars. Uh, I think we can build our way out of this, and I think we can grow our way out of this. So to build our way out of it is identifying the industries um, that we want to dominate and lead the world in around electric vehicles, around the batteries that go into them, the charging stations. Um, right now, uh, China dominates 40 to 50 percent of the electric vehicle market, so this can be both a job creator and good for the environment. We're going to build about 30 million electric vehicles in the next 10 years. I want half of those built in the United States. Same with the batteries, same with the charging stations. Solar panels, same thing. China controls 60 percent of that market. I want us to dominate that market and then drive the investment into places like Dubuque, and Youngstown, and coal country, and old auto country, old steel country, old textile country. Like as these industries grow, I want us to dominate them, and then I want to steer the investment into the communities that have been left behind in the last 30 years, because that's where my, my heart is. We've got to make sure everybody benefits from the new growth. We can do the same thing with wind. You know, solar's growing at 30% a year, wind's growing at 20% a year. Um, so build our way out of it. The other piece of that is in innovations and carbon capture and you know just unleash the potential of the country and do it in a public-private partnership way. So align the financial incentives with the environmental incentives. I just think that if we don't tap into the best aspects of the free enterprise system, we are making a huge mistake. I mean, if we want to get this thing turned around, let people start making money off it. And our job is to say, you're going to pay your workers well, you know, they're going to be cut in on the deal, they're going to have a retirement, they're going to be get profit sharing, like we'll incentivize that through the tax code that these workers will be in on the deal and get the minimum wage up and work livable wages and all this stuff. That's one. The other part which is really exciting is around regenerative agriculture. So we're going to be coming out in the next couple of weeks with a whole plan on promoting regenerative agriculture. So regenerative agriculture is uh, different than what happens now with kind of the industrial agriculture. It is trying to harmonize what you're growing with the soil. So what we've done in the last 30 years in the United States is we've, we've completely destroyed our soil. And this is why, one of the reasons why we see so much flooding, because we've taken all the organic material out of the soil because of the pesticides, and then um, the, the soil has become very almost solid. And so the water comes in, it runs off, puts the nitrogen in the, the river. In the Great Lakes, we get algae blooms. A lot of lakes around the country get algae blooms. Literally, what happens now, we kill 220 metric tons of fish in the Gulf of Mexico every single year because of the agricultural runoff. So regenerative agriculture is about really first and foremost taking care of the soil. And so for uh, every 1% increase in organic matter in the soil, that acre of land holds 27,000 gallons of water. So by getting the carbon in the soil through regenerative practices, they do cover crops and all kinds of different uh, techniques that they have, you start to build the soil out, it becomes more porous, it holds more water, so it becomes more resilient to flooding and then more resilient to drought. What I will do is pay farmers to increase the carbon level of the soil so they can start making money, reducing their crop insurance premiums, direct payments, like I'm agnostic about how we figure that out, but I want to pay farmers money to sequester carbon and they can sequester a lot of carbon in a pretty short period of time. A lot of people are saying now we can literally solve the climate problem if we move to global regenerative agriculture. I want the United States to lead the way on that. I think it'd be another exciting thing. How do we bring in young farmers? Like the average age of farmers are like 59 or 60 years old. So just like we need new teachers, we need new farmers. And I will put a program together where we'll have four or five teams of four or five people in every state using the agriculture extension programs and using the USDA to actually teach farmers how to go regenerative and then also pay the farmers for any transition costs that they may have moving from industrial farming to because they I mean they're just following the payments now if we pay them for this they'll move and we should pay for the transition given everything they've been through and I just on a political note so that's my plan 
Um, on a political note, I believe we can take that idea and go into rural America and start picking off some people to come vote for us. <laughs> like we'll actually have a plan and another part of my rural plan will be downtown redevelopment, uh, making sure that these hospitals have the kind of uh, support that they need. We, we saw a hospital close in Youngstown. So go into these downtowns, rebuild the theaters, river walks, uh, amphitheaters, bike trails, quality of life, community development block grant money to really build up the downtown in these smaller downtowns that have been left behind. So help the farmers make some money, build out the ag economy, build out the rural economy, and then make investments into the small town to bring that quality of life and community back. I think that's exciting. So anyway, we're gonna, that's the two-part plan plus.